The Royal Directive of His Majesty the King uh, during the opening of the second session of the 6th Legislative Term to develop an action plan concerned with preserving the historical and cultural identity of the buildings and cities of Bahrain and reviving the Isa Grand Palace as well as well-known neighbourhoods in the city of Maharik affirm His Majesty's interest in preserving the historical and cultural character of the Kingdom in implementation of the Royal Order. The Cabinet affirmed the activation of an immediate action plan to preserve the historical identity of the Kingdom's cities and villages and the launch of a plan to revamp the city of Maharik. His Majesty's directive reflected Maharik's special status for His Majesty and the people of Bahrain, for which the people of Maharik expressed their pride and admiration. The government efforts headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister have begun to implement the Royal Order. His Royal Highness directed to activate the plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of the buildings and cities of Bahrain and to launch a plan to revamp the city of Maharik. The Royal Directive reflects the keenness of the leadership to preserve the cultural and historical character of the Kingdom. Constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities during the past period has achieved many great benefits that have been positively reflected in the significant development of national action. More in this report. The process of the comprehensive national work and construction was based in its achievement on the effective realization of the principle of cooperation between the authorities stipulated in the constitution of the Kingdom of Bahrain and an embodiment of the highest forms of integrated national action that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa have always worked to develop. The directors of His Royal Highness demonstrated that constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities resulted in the achievement of many constructive national accomplishments that were embodied in the rapid implementation of pivotal national projects and initiatives through accelerating the pace of legislative work as well as many constructive coordination and consultative meetings in various fields. Consecutive national achievements and diligent and continuous work to achieve the principle of cooperation between the two authorities contributed to advancing national work to advanced stages that reflected on the citizens' continued growth and prosperity in various fields. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the EDB's Board of Directors meeting at his headquarters in Bahrain Bay. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of His Majesty the King's address during the opening ceremony of the second session of the sixth legislative term of the Shura and Representatives Councils, which set forth His Majesty's far-reaching visions for the next phase of development and serves as a source of inspiration to enhance government work streams in partnership with the private sector to achieve the Kingdom's aspirations. His Royal Highness expressed eagerness to sustainability, grow and diversify Bahrain's economy in cooperation with the legislative authority by continuing to adopt and develop legislation and laws that benefit all. The board reviewed the EDB's efforts to attract direct investments in vital priority sectors, its contributions to strengthening Bahrain's position as an attractive global destination for investment and discussed the most prominent regional and global economic developments. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the EDB and the remarkable growth achieved in establishing investment projects in Bahrain, highlighting the importance of accelerating the pace and timing of those projects of quality opportunities for citizens. His Royal Highness affirmed the continued launch of more programmes that make Bahrain the first choice in the labour market and enable them to improve their competitiveness by bolstering their skills and professionalism. His Royal Highness affirmed the effectiveness of the Fiscal Balance Programme according to the achievements presented at the meeting, indicating an overall economic growth which should reflect in an increase in the income of Bahraini households. The Chief Executive of Bahrain EDB, Khaled Ibrahim Humedan, presented the EDB's key achievements in 2023, noting that the EDB attracted US$1.4 billion US dollars in direct local and international investment through investments in 64 investment projects, which will help in providing more than 4,500 employment opportunities over a three-year period. The latest developments in the global economy were also discussed, including the expectations of the International Monetary Fund, which indicated a decline in growth in the global economy in 2023 to 2024. 
Additionally, the board reviewed the Kingdom's economic indicators for the first half of 2023, which recorded an average GDP growth of 2%, while the growth of the non-oil GDP reached 2.8%, which affirms the non-oil growth's leading role in Bahrain's economic growth. The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, several senior officials and members of the Board of Directors of the EDB also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of BAPCO Energies, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, presided over the company's Board of Directors meeting for the third quarter of this year. His Highness reviewed the company's financial performance for the first nine months of 2023 and discussed the group's strategic plans. His Highness also received updates and key projects aligned with the Kingdom's vision for a transformative energy landscape and in turn the board approved funding facilities and investment structures. His Highness reaffirmed the company's commitment to accelerating the energy transition in the Kingdom, which includes effort put forth in launching BAPCO Energy Sustainability Linked Financing Framework, which incorporates a Scope 3 emissions. Group CEO of BAPCO Energies, Mark Thomas, provided the board with updates on several critical development projects. These updates included the status of the BAPCO modernization program, ongoing exploration and production activities by BAPCO Upstream, and comprehensive engagement plans and activities on the international stage, with a particular focus on COP28. The Council of Representatives held its second regular session in the second session of the sixth legislative term, presided over by its Speaker Ahmed al Musalam. The, the Council was notified of the letter received from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister on the state's unified final account for the fiscal year ending on December the 31st, 2022. The performance report on the implementation of the state's general budget for the fiscal year 2022 and the statement of transfers from the other estimates accounts of ministries and government agencies for the fiscal year 2022, which was referred to the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee. The Council also discussed a number of proposals, including requesting the civil service apparatus to return the disbursement of bonuses and additional benefits to employees of government ministries and providing emergency dental treatment around the clock in health centres that operate at 24 hours a day, as well as the Bahrainianisation of teachers' jobs by 70% in private schools and supporting the salaries to the equivalent of those holding teaching positions in public schools. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, opened the new radiology unit at Salmania Medical Complex, which includes the latest medical technologies in specialised radiology, coinciding with the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The unit includes the latest mammography and MRI machines. Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah here at the advanced level of radiology services and the comprehensive services provided to patients and the visitors at the medical complex to achieve the vision of the health sector of utilising the best machines and medical technology for patients. For his part, the CEO of Government Hospitals stated that the machine used at the unit is one of the latest diagnostic and interventional breast imaging devices, noting that taking biopsies and breast samples has begun under re radiological guidance, successfully identifying abnormalities within medical wires and imaging patients with this device starting in July. Under the patronage of the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the 10th Bahrain International E-Government Forum was inaugurated, where the winners of the E-Government Excellence Award were announced in the presence of the ministers, senior officials, experts and those interested in the information and communications technology sector from inside and outside Bahrain. The Minister of Interior delivered the following speech on the occasion. يطيب لي بداية أن أرحب بكم جميعا في منتدى البحرين 
الدولي للحكومة الإلكترونية والذي يعد إطارا شاملا لطرح أفضل المبادرات والأفكار والمشاريع الإلكترونية التي تسهم في دعم مسيرة البناء والتطوير التي تعيشها مملكة البحرين وبهذه المناسبة أود أن أعرب عن خالص الاعتزاز والتقدير للتوجيهات الملكية السامية لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه بتوظيف التكنولوجيا الحديثة في خدمة المجتمع بهدف الارتقاء بحياة المواطنين وتوفير سبل العيش الكريم للجميع مشيدا بدعم ومتابعة الحكومة الموقرة لرئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي الأهل رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله للمبادرات البناءة التي تسهم في تطوير الأداء الحكومي الحضور الكريم إننا اليوم نتطلع إلى مستقبل أفضل فإنه بعد أن كانت المجتمعات تعيش حياة بسيطة ومعاملات الأفراد فيها محدودة وتحتاج وقتا وجهدا كبيرا لإنجازها أصبحنا نجد أن نسبة 66% من سكان العالم على الاتصال بالإنترنت في ظل نهضة قطاع تكنولوجيا المعلومات وذلك بحسب إحصائيات الاتحاد الدولي للاتصالات الأمر الذي شكل نمطا جديدا للحياة وبوتيرة أسرع في كافة المجتمعات مما ساهم في رفع التطلعات والمتطلبات لتوفير خدمات إلكترونية ذات جودة عالية لقد كانت مملكة البحرين سباقة في التطور والتحول الرقمي مستلهمة ريادتها من الرؤية الملكية السامية لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه وبدعم ومتابعة من صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله حيث أسست بنية تحتية قوية لقطاع الاتصالات ووصلت نسبة مستخدمي الانترنت اليوم إلى 100% لدى جميع شرائح وفيات المجتمع وانعكست هذه الريادة بشكل واضح على التحول الشامل للخدمات والأنظمة الإلكترونية والتي بلغت نسبة استخدامها 90% وانطلاقا من حرص الحكومة الموقرة على الارتقاء بالأداء والخدمات التي تقدمها فقد تضمن برنامج عملها الأعوام 2023 و26 مجموعة من المحاور أبرزها محور الأداء الحكومي والتحول الرقمي والذي دفع بالمزيد من الخدمات والمعاملات الرقمية في عمل الوزارات والهيئات الحكومية مع السعي نحو تعزيز الابتكار وتقييم وقياس جودة ما تقدمه من خدمات للجمهور حيث شملت سلسلة من البرامج والمبادرات الوطنية التي كفلت هذا التوجه الحكومي مثل مبادرة تقييم مراكز الخدمة الحكومية لضمان مواكبة عملها مع الممارسات العالمية في خدمة العملاء وقد فرض التطور التكنولوجي في مجال المعلومات والاتصالات والذي يتم بمعدلات متسارعة مفاهيم جديدة في مجال الأمن استدعت تجاوز المفهوم التقليدي بحيث أصبح التحدي في تحقيق الأمن بمعناه الشامل عبر منظومة كاملة لتشمل بجانب الأمن العام الأمن الاقتصادي والاجتماعي والفكري وأصبح الأمن السيبراني وأمن المعلومات أحد أهم أركان الأمن الشامل والذي يشكل الأولوية الرئيسية في حماية المصالح الحيوية والاستراتيجية وأود الإشارة إلى أن اللجنة الوزارية لتقنية المعلومات 
والاتصالات قامت بتشكيل لجنة لبحث قدرات ومجالات تطبيق الذكاء الاصطناعي من خلال دراسة أكثر من 160 مجال لتطبيقه وتقييم الفرص والمخاطر ومدى كفاية التشريعات لحماية الأفراد ووضع مقترحات الميثاق الأخلاقي لتنظيم عمله وحوكمة تطويره ومن أجل بناء ثقافة مجتمعية من شأنها تعزيز التعامل مع الذكاء الاصطناعي الحضور الكريم إن الجاهزية التقنية العالية التي وصلت إليها الحكومة والتحول الرقمي الشامل في حزمة كبيرة من الخدمات والأنظمة المترابطة المقدمة من خلال عدة قنوات دفعتنا للتخطيط نحو المستقبل والاستفادة من هذا النجاح على المستوى الوطني من خلال إطلاق أول استراتيجية وطنية للاقتصاد الرقمي تقوم على مشاركة كافة المؤسسات الوطنية في تنفيذها خلال السنوات الخمس القادمة بإذن الله وفي الختام أتوجه بالتهنئة لكافة الجهات الفائزة بجوائز التميز والتي تعكس ما قدموه من جهود وإبداعات في مجال عمل الحكومة الإلكترونية مما يسهم في مواصلة أداء مسيرة التطور الوطني في مجال تقنية المعلومات والاتصالات والشكر موصول إلى كافة الجهات والرعاة والمسؤولين والخبراء المشاركين في هذا المنتدى مع تمنيات الجميع دوام التوفيق والنجاح إن شاء الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For his part, the Information and E-Government Authority Chief Executive, Mohammed Al-Qaid, gave a presentation in which he highlighted the technological readiness in Bahrain. He noted that Bahrain was one of the first countries to launch a national government network, providing the operational environment for more than 5,000 government systems and services and linking more than 45 government entities. After that, a short film was screened about the award, which was launched in 2008, and supports creativity and innovation in spreading the culture of electronic excellence among individuals and society institutions, and contributed to enhancing government performance and improving the quality of its services. The Minister of Interior then presented awards to the award winners and honoured the sponsors of the Bahrain International E-Government Forum. The Minister also opened the Compax Bahrain Technology Exhibition 2023.
The Minister also opened the Complex Bahrain Technology Exhibition 2023, which brings together pavilions specialising in information and communications technology, including ministries and government agencies. The exhibition showcases government digital initiatives and modern technologies to improve government operations and services. The Minister of Health, Dr Jalila Hassan, participated in the 70th session of the WHO Regional Committee for the Eastern Mediterranean, RC70, in Cairo, under the theme United for a Healthier Future. The Minister affirmed that Bahrain's participation in this session reflects its keenness to support regional efforts to research and discuss the most important health issues and review the prominent topics. The Minister noted the role of joint regional efforts in achieving sustainable development goals, accelerating comprehensive health coverage and ensuring health for all. The Royal Address of His Majesty the King during the opening of the second session of the National Assembly in the sixth legislative term reviewed a wide interaction through various types of media. More in this report. The Royal Address of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which was delivered upon opening the second session of the National Assembly in its sixth legislative term, was welcomed and widely praised across various media outlets as it reflects a firm belief in the democratic approach and its constructive role in promoting national gains. Newspaper and social media headlined the highlights of the Royal Address and His Majesty's affirmation to continue the process of reform and modernization and consolidate the democratic foundations and principles on which the national process was based. The media also highlighted the visions and aspirations conveyed by the Royal Address to consolidate the historical and cultural identity in the Kingdom through the directors of His Majesty to develop an action plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities. His Majesty the King's emphasis on the importance of national unity as a protector of the cohesion of society and the civilizational gains and achievements came to be one of the most important pillars that the media emphasized. The media highlighted the contents and ambitious visions of His Majesty's address in continuing the process of construction and progress with full strength and determination. 
The activities of the 10th edition of the Bahrain International E-Government Forum were launched under the patronage of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. The forum has witnessed the participation of over 500 attendees. The sessions featured renowned local and global speakers in information and communication technology and artificial intelligence, shedding light on AI and social media networks, the future of work in the context of AI and AI's role in digital transformation. The forum included many sessions on various topics related to artificial intelligence, digital transformation and modern technology. The forum also witnessed a wide local and regional presence and will witness the announcements of the names of the entities and individuals winning the 12th edition of the E-Government Excellence Award 2023. I was speaking about the age of AI, which is basically, in my view, a turning point for society because I think that AI is about to change the way that we live, work and experience life. So it was a pleasure to speak to the group today about the opportunity that we have to really create a whole new future. By leveraging AI, but also other supporting technologies, we can rethink as a society how we educate, how we work together, how we manufacture, how we support. The Civil Service Bureau, in partnership with the Information E-Government Authority and the Bahrain Accredited Reference Bureau, a benefit, revealed the launch of a number of e-services. The Civil Service Bureau affirmed that this step will help save time and effort for government employees in the civil service and it will contribute to improving their experience as users by enabling them to submit and complete requests for issuing salary and service certificates in a timely and immediate manner. The certificates that will be issued in these services will be certified, stamped and available electronically in Arabic and English and in PDF format. The applicant will also receive a copy of the approved certificate via email, in addition to providing a QR code feature to access the authentic certificate. The third edition of the Bahrain Film Festival 2023 concluded yesterday, which was held under the patronage of the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Al Nuaimi, which was organised by the Bahrain Cinema Club and sponsored by the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities. The festival, which was themed Celebrating the Art of Filmmaking, included a number of film screenings and specific workshops specialised in cinema. During the closing ceremony, the festival's main awards were announced and supporting bodies, workshop and seminar presenters, as well as selection and arbitration committees were honoured. On this occasion, the artistic director of the Bahrain Film Festival, Amar Zanal, praised the initiative of the Minister of Information to sponsor the festival and his belief in the passion of young people in the field of making short films, pointing out that the festival came to create a different and profound cinematic culture. Zanal announced the continuation of the Bahrain Film Festival in its fourth edition next year.